have I got an action-packed show for you today. You are going to learn all about the five best practices for writing killer captions. What I'm about to share with you can apply to not only captions, but titles for going live, reels, and IGTV. You can also use these tips to craft your bio. Research shows you have seven seconds when someone lands on your bio to either convert or click away. You want to convert, right? That's what I thought. So stay tuned because you are not going to believe all the resources I have for you today. Hey there, it's Ruthie from RuthieGray.mom and welcome to Instagram Insider Hacks. So easy, your mom can do it. This is the podcast that teaches you how to authentically deliver your message in a non-pushy way. If you want to receive engagement and investment on your Insta time, listen in. And now, here's your host, me, Ruthie Gray. I am so excited to share this. It has made all the difference in whether people scroll or stop. So I know it's going to help you today. Number one of the top five best practices for writing killer captions is this. Craft a title. You may have noticed I usually have a title in capital letters or in a different font. It does need to tell what your caption's about so that people can know if they're interested in the topic or not. So if you want to delve a little bit deeper into crafting a title, I would recommend you study this anyway. If you are a writer or if you are crafting blog posts or podcasts or any kind of copy to craft killer headlines. So here's how I crafted today's headline, five best practices for writing killer captions. I popped it in co-schedule headline analyzer. They give you common words, uncommon words, emotional and power words. And I had seven words. So my headline was the right length. Headlines with approximately six words tend to earn the highest number of click-throughs. Experts say you really need to try to craft 15 to 20 headlines before coming up with the right one. So just start writing a bunch of ideas for headlines. The more you get down on paper, the better you'll get and the better your idea will form. Then go over there to co-schedule a headline analyzer and pop those in and look at their suggestions and add words, take away words. One more thing I will say about this. Sometimes I use a different font to craft my headlines. I have an iPhone, so it's an iPhone app called Font, F-O-N-T. Let's move on to number two. Share a hook. Hooks are phrases that convert. For instance, you'll never guess what I saw on the street last week. Start out with an anecdote or a quote, some kind of statistics, something that draws the reader in right away. You can even use a question as a hook. Now, I have a resource for hooks, and I'm going to share about that at the end of this recording. So stay tuned. Number three is your actual caption. This is the meat of what you want to get across. First, provide good spacing. Have you ever gone to read someone's caption and it was just all in one big long clump? That is hard on the eyes. And most people don't want to take the time to read clumped up writing. Instagram has recently made this easier. If you're typing in the app and crafting your post, 
you can now have spacing. So that is a game changer because always before you had to do all these little dots or backspace or use a certain app for spacing. Another thing that I really encourage you to do is to add a few emojis to pull the eye along. I realize some people don't really love emojis, but a few tasteful ones will just help give the eye a little bit of rest and some color to pull it along. Stagger your caption into long, short, or medium form. People don't like to read long all the time. And you can hear more about this on my episode 12, how to find the best Instagram filters for stories plus link tree and IG captions. You need to spend time on your caption. You will be happy you did this, and so will your readers. Throwing words at people does not work. (laughs) You want to stand out. You want to stop them from scrolling. You want them to think, hey, I want to read what she has to say. She always is delivering value, or she's making me laugh, or she's encouraging, or she's educating me. So spend time on those captions. I have another pro tip that will help with captions, which I'll share later in number five, and it is a game changer. If you're listening to this episode in October, grab your free ticket to the Flourish Conference in the show notes. It's taking place for three weeks from October 6th to October 23rd. It features speakers like Grace Cho, Katie Reed, Ann Croker, Rob Eager, and Chad Allen, just to name a few. The creators of the Flourish Writers Conference have gathered 33 speakers that are passionate about empowering and equipping others with tools to write. Now, you may not be a writer, but you are an Instagrammer if you're listening to this. Instagrammers can always always hone writing crafts, which is why I'm doing this episode right now. Many people come to me and say, I am writing a book, but my publishers want me to grow my platform. So if you fall in that camp, you definitely want to get in on this conference. And I'll tell you another secret. I'm a speaker at the conference. During my session, I'm going to share what kind of content writers and authors should share on Instagram. I'm also spilling the beans on my top three tips for using Instagram, plus a few advanced Instagram strategies. Even if you aren't an aspiring author, you'll want to catch that session. And full disclosure, I do want to tell you that I am an affiliate for the Flourish Writers And you will have an opportunity to purchase an all-access pass, which contains all the recorded sessions, plus bonus goodies, one of which is mine. And it's so affordable, it's crazy. But again, you can listen to all the episodes for free during the whole three-week period. I'll drop this link in the show notes so you can check it out. Or you can always shoot me a DM on Instagram because, you know, that's the playground where I spend most of my days. All right, let's get into number four on Instagram captions. This is the key ingredient that I see many people overlooking. It's the call to action. If you're forgetting to do this, I want you to listen to a piece of advice I gave a listener on my recent Instagram live. All right, Terry has a question here. I've heard from several blog business instructors that Instagram doesn't convert well, doesn't send people to our blogs. Okay, so Terry, all that has to do with is you have to be the one. It's really up to you. It's your job to drive your traffic to your blog. And the way you do that is by dropping the breadcrumbs. So first, you're not always talking about your blog. You're not always talking about head to the blog. You should have a call to action every time. 
in your in your feed posts and everywhere that you post. And we're specifically talking about stories today. So what I'm going to say is stories is where you get to know the people and you start doing those polls and those questions three times a week so that you're dropping those breadcrumbs so that they are responding to you. You're getting to know them so that when they do, when you do ask and say, head to the blog to read blah, 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 then they want to do that because you have developed that know, like, and trust factor with them. But without that connection that you can make, especially in stories, then it won't happen. So what we have to realize is that we have to give, we have to encourage, we have to entertain, or we have to educate something. We have to give value to get people over to our blogs. Now, remember, the call to action shouldn't always be head to the blog or click my link in bio. Drop the breadcrumbs. If you want more breadcrumb ideas, I have a resource you're going to love, and I'll share it at the end of this recording. And finally, number five, use a scheduler. Personally, I use later.com because I love it and I've used it for three years. It's free for up to 30 photos a month and you can upload and type those captions right in desktop. Now, you'll also need to download the app to your phone. In this way, you can upload pictures from your camera so that when you're ready to craft those captions at your desktop, your photos will be right there. So let's just wrap this up. Number one, craft a title. Take the time to make a good one. Make it in capital letters or use a special font. Number two, share a hook, a question, an anecdote, a quote, a jolting statement. Number three, take time to craft that caption. Put spaces in there. Stagger the content and deliver value so people will stop scrolling. Number four, provide a call to action. People forget this all the time, but if you drop those breadcrumbs, you are training your followers to act on every single post. So that when you really need the big ask, the click over off of Instagram and onto your link, they're ready to do it. And number five, use a scheduler. Commit to regular posting. I kept talking about my free resource, my Instagram caption blueprint, and you can get that through one of two ways. Grab it in the show notes, or you can simply send me a DM. It's completely free. Suggestions for titles, captions, hooks, and calls to action so that you can make your captions stoppable and clickable. I'll see you next week on Instagram Insider Hacks. Thank you for listening.